Hey guys, just going to do a little follow up video to changing the remote desktop default port. I'm going to show you how to do a port forward on my specific router, which is a Netgear D7000 V2. I'm going to set up a static IP address and show you how to do an IP reservation. Also going to show you how to find your router address in the first place. And we'll just go through the process of actually setting up the port forward. So first up, we're going to actually get the IP address of the computer. So we'll just do a Windows key R to bring up the run box, type CMD and type IP config. And we'll do another Windows key R and type notepad. And we'll just select that and press hold control and press C to copy it. And then we'll paste it in here with control V or you could just go edit paste. We're just going to get this saved for reference. So if we set a set a static IP address, we know which details to put in. The easiest way I find to do a static IP address is to go to the start menu, type control panel, change the view by to small icons and go to network and sharing center. Then we'll go to change adapter settings, find the adapter we're using on this laptop I'm taking the video on, we're going to use the Wi-Fi network. We'll just double click on it and go to properties. Then we'll scroll down to TCP IP version four and click properties. And this is where you set the static IP address. Currently it's getting it off the DHCP server, which lives on the router as well. So I'm just gonna pop some details in here. which is the ones we saved from earlier. The only other detail we didn't get was the preferred DNS server, but I'm just gonna set that to the router as well. And we'll put Google's public IP address in there just for good sake. Click okay, click close and click close. We can now get rid of that as well. Actually, we'll leave it open just for the reference of the IP address. Now, the second bit of information that we got out of the command prompt was the default gateway. If we just copy that address, we can go into a web browser or just into the run box again, Windows key R, type HTTP dot dot slash slash and paste the address in there and click OK. That will ask us for the authentication to the router. Now, generally, if you just take this out of the box, it'll be running on the default settings, which is admin and password, but I have changed mine. So we'll see if I can remember it. Okay, there we go. Then we're gonna to browse to advanced. We'll just drop down the setup and go to LAN setup. This is where you'll find the DHCP server essentially. Uh, and this is what's serving out your IP addresses to your devices on your network. So. I have some reservations set here already for other computers in the house, but for this laptop, for the example, we'll just set add. And then we've got the address reservation table, which has addresses that have got an IP address from the DHCP server. Now we know from before that dot 12 was the address of the laptop, which is what we also set statically. You can just click on that and hit add. We don't necessarily need to do that because we have actually statically set the address, but for good measure, we're gonna do it anyway. The bonus of doing it there also is that then the router is not going to try and give the IP address out to other clients and create an IP conflict. We'll go down to advanced setup then we'll go to port forwarding and port triggering. Now, this is where we can actually set the port forward for whatever you want it to be. In the service name here, you will find there is some defaults that are automatically set by Netgear themselves. I believe FTP is like port 21, Telnet's port 23, etc. But in this case, we're going to do a custom port so we're gonna click add custom port. And in our previous example, we had a 
port set on the RDP to 4000. So we're going to give it a service name, RDP to laptop. Service type, TCP or UDP, but I'm just going to leave it as both. External starting port is going to be 4000 and the ending or external ending port will also be 4000. The internal starting port and ending port is going to be whatever was on the internal network. So you could technically set the RDP to 5000, untick this box and put in 5000. But for this example, we're going to leave it as 4000. Then we just need to set the internal IP address. We can manually type it in here, or we, can, we know it's dot .12 at the end. So we can just find that in our list, click on the box or the checkbox, and hit apply. You can use this for whatever you like. You can use it for Minecraft servers, remote desktop, phones, IP cameras, whatever you need it for. All right, that's all. See you guys.